to be in the room. Mm-hmm. Which is totally incorrect. On your bicyclist, you're on the road, you need to pay attention and really, you know, you have to look out for the cars around you. You're driving a car. It is hard to see somebody moving on their feet, let alone now on a bicycle that's doing 35, 40 miles an hour. Blind spot quicker than you expected, and there you go. Your eyes don't move that fast. So I submit to you that you want to use your eyes in the process. Far to near, left to right. You know, far to near, look behind you, look left to right, you got it. Okay? Use your eyes in the process. It'll be the first defense against all of this stuff we're talking about. And the laws for, for bicyclists and pedestrians in Maryland are skewed. People don't realize cyclists and bicyclists have the more privilege and right of way and rights to the road than drivers do in the state of Maryland. So it is important that we use our eyes and anticipate, see things before they get out of hand. Okay? A bicycle, safe and legal driving, all right? You must be you know, three feet from a cyclist. Uh, you must use the obvious riding in the bike lanes or shoulders when entering or crossing occupied bike lanes or shoulders. You must yield to a bicyclist operating lawfully in a crosswalk. Half times they believe that they can, they can operate L, um, unlawfully to be in the right. So, fail to yield the, the right of way to a bicyclist which results in a crash, can result in a thousand dollar fine and three points on your driving record. Pedestrian, safe and legal driving, okay? More than 3,000 pedestrians crash annually, all right? So cars and pedestrians clash annually. More than 3,000 pedestrians are gonna be involved. 80% of those crashes involve serious injury or a fatality, life-changing event. Most pedestrians, um, uh, related crashes occur in urban areas, city areas, including more congested, more people, and most frequently between three in the afternoon until 10 at night, because people are out of work, they're going home, kids are out, people getting off work, people going to work, people going to out eat, going to the club, the bar, the club. It's a very busy time for people to post schedule. Uh, almost 30% of drivers involved in pedestrian crashes were new drivers. Okay? So, pedestrian safe and legal. That <coughs> car is out of line. They should be behind the stop line, not in the crosswalk. So if anything happens, they're at fault. They're paying for it. Think about it. Part of what you're doing is protecting your pocketbook. How many people want to give away money? Just want to give away money. You're just desirous to just give away money. I didn't think so. Must not pass a vehicle stop to allow a pedestrian to cross uh, when turning right or left. You must yield to uh, pedestrians in the crosswalk. forget that day. The week before graduation. We were so excited. You see headlines about people getting hit. You never think it could be you or your friends. A split second. Campus, 
Driveway. You're going to use a right turn, left turn. You're going to make a right turn at a stop sign. You're going to make a left turn at a stop sign. You're pulling into traffic with the side road, obeying speed bumps and potholes, okay? Roundabouts, parking, perpendicular parking, angle parking, parallel parking. This is all life in the neighborhood, especially in the city area, urban area, okay? So, there's that, there's that, that picture again. This one's about space, managing space. Your eyes need to see far in the air. See the driveway, see the on-off road, the horses, the houses, okay? So, right turns. If there is a stop sign or a red light, stop. you must stop before making your turn. Before turning, make sure you see. If there is no stop light or stop sign, you will need to slow down and see before making your turn. So, here, what they're describing is, the, one of the first things you do about getting information is signing first. When you get to an intersection, it's regulated by anything. It's signing first. If we've got a red light, you got to know, is there a sign there that tells me I cannot or that I can make my turn? It's signing first. It's signing first. I have a stop sign. Who else has a stop sign? Right? So, that, so the right of way progression. The right of way. So there are certain things that I'm answering even before I get to my intersection by looking at certain things. Reference points, signs. These are all things in your environment that tell you how to operate. So when I don't have the, I'm the absence of these things, there's a default after the way I have to behave. Okay? So the lack of doesn't, you know, ignorance does not get, you know, get you unscathed out of the process. All right? Now, when you make a right turn at a stop sign, when you come to any stop sign, stop. It's signing first, the stop sign. One, two, three. You go about your business. Okay? Um, where? Question for you. Say again? So, um, when you come to, how you just said, when you come to a stop sign and get that count, is it like traditionally like wait three seconds or just when, whenever there's like, and you're, you're able to like, um, when, I guess when traffic is clear for you to make a, yeah. Okay, so you want to stay with the process. My my part of my process is I stay with one, two, three. Everything I do is a one, two, three rhythm. And the reason is, like when you go take your test, you don't know what exam you're going to have. You can have an exam that says you have to count one, one thousand, one second. Two, one thousand, one second. Three, one thousand, one second. There are examiners I know that is a complete stop for them. If you go one, two, Three, which most of us understand is, is perfectly acceptable, he says, she says no. Oh. Ah, there's other, other, other examples like one, two, three, all right, you're good. So it's subjective. You want to make sure 
you're being accountable for all the information possible. So you want to take four seconds. If you have to, you take it. But you have to be responsible for the information. You can't come away saying, oh, I don't know what just happened. That's not, that's not going to work. You see what I'm saying? Oh. It says, there's a stop. You're going to stop before your vehicle crosses the stop line, enters the crosswalk, or enters the intersection. No there doesn't mention a stop sign. I keep saying this, and people miss this point. Come to a complete a stop sign. Nowhere in the book, in the instructions that you'll ever hear from me, am I ever going to tell you that the stop sign is where you're going to stop. You yield for pedestrian cyclists, anyone to your right, anyone who has the stop sign before you. This is a stop sign protocol, all right? How do you, how do you look? You look to your right, your left, and your right again. When? If the intersection is clear, there's enough space in any of the oncoming traffic, there's no one there, you may proceed. Okay? So that is what... I have a question. Yes. Um, just going back to uh, where exactly you stop when there is a stop sign, because I know some have a stop line, which makes it really easy. You know, I'm supposed to stop right here, but sometimes there'll be a stop sign that'll be like uh, X amount of feet before the curve of an intersection. Are you supposed to stop right at where the stop sign is and right as the pole is, or like right where the stop pole is, if there's no oh. stop line? Or can you stop like right where the curve needs to go into like the intersection so you can see and look left and right because i sometimes run into the issue is if i stop right where the pole is i have to like inch forward so i can get full visibility before i make my turn okay so uh, this is what they answer that for you stay with me samantha okay this slide next slide we're going to explain that answer to you here's why samantha just asked a very important question where notice so stop uh, stopping the stop sign it is about pre getting predetermined information. Okay, people? So where do you stop? You stop for the cross for the stop line. The stop, the stop line is the only device that tells you where to stop and to stop. It's the only one. If you don't have a stop line, you stop for the crosswalk, but the crosswalk has to be activated by a sign or pedestrian. If it's not activated, then it moves into a category of being part of the road. So it has to be activated in order for it, for you to stop for it, okay? So, and then the other thing is, enter the intersection. If you don't have a stop line, your crosswalk is not activated, then you're gonna stop where your, your front bumper does not enter into the, into the intersection, okay? So, to Samantha's point, by the time you get to the stop sign, this I'll tell you is one, two, three. The first thing you wanna do is, as you're gradually slowing down, because you don't want to go, and stop. You want to start gradually slowing down, easing into the intersection. You want to count, okay, accountability. Do I have a stop line? Do I stop by the stop line? Okay, who is there? Pedestrians, cyclists, what's going on there? Are there any vehicles in the intersection or coming towards the intersection? By the time you get to that intersection, you should know what's there, who's there, and when they got there. So by the time you stop for that stop line, you go right into how? Now, instinctively, our society mostly right. If I had you had your hand up, for if you're right-handed, put your hand up. We live in a right-handed dominant society. What happens is even people who are left-handed instinctively. Hey man, how are you? Out the out the They use the right. Yeah, can't complain. They use the right. So you look your equipment. So what happens is you look to the right. So what I'm going to do is force myself to look left, straight, right. Three seconds, I've got the rest of the information I need. So by the time I get to the stop line, by the time I get to the intersection, I've stopped and know who's there. I look left, nobody there. Straight, nobody there. To the right, there's somebody there. Now guess what? I have all the information about the, stop, about the intersection. Who to stop for, when to stop for. If they're on my right, they go first. If they're on my left, I go first. Okay? If they're straight ahead of me, well... Who's turning? Now, who's turning becomes a, becomes a part of the question they need to answer. Okay? So if they're turning, I go first. Whoever goes straight goes first. If I'm turning, they're going straight, they go first. What your opposite. Okay? So that's what's going on there. Okay? So now I know I got there first. Boom. I got the information. I look left, straight, right. Now, if you get there right, if you get there, you go. If I get there, I go. If we get there, the third point, if we get there around the same time, the person on the right has the right away. 
So when I look left, straight, right, and someone's on my right, they have Kayla has the right away. If I get there and Francisco's on my left, I automatically have the right away. You see what you're doing? So it's a one, two, three process that you're constantly using. Turning, and negotiating intersections, everything is a one, two, three process. Okay? So, right here. Has this Volkswagen stopped in the appropriate spot? No. 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 I submit to you, he has. He has? He has. He has stopped, he has stopped where his front bumper is not in the intersection. So he's not in the okay, um, The bike lane, the sidewalk bike lane, has to have a bike leader pedestrian present in order for him to stop forward. At that time, he would stop behind the stop sign. But the stop sign knows how far back it is. To submit this point, you can't see. So stop, you want to stop where your front bumper is not in the intersection, and you can see traffic left and right. If you've got that combination going, you've stopped in a legal spot. It's just that simple. So if you look at this intersection, you've got a stop sign. Yes, you've got a bike path there, okay? There's nobody there. You keep it moving. And notice how far that stop, that stop sign is about 15 feet back from that intersection. Mm -hmm. Stopping at the stop sign does nothing for you. Okay? Now make the right turn, search what is behind, beside you, what is in front of you, what is behind you. Do you see any risk groups? I got school buses, I got joggers, I got bicyclists. Yeah, I got risk groups. I have variables. Anything that may affect my driving is a variable. I slow down. Okay? So, have, have you come, come to a complete total stop? Have I? Okay? Um, have you searched in all directions? I have to see everything before I can make it operate, before I can move. Okay? What are some other factors you need to evaluate? The speed of traffic patterns or the roads around you. The time of day, road conditions. What kind of road are you driving on? Are there any road users with you? How fast or slowly is everyone else moving? I need some to get the chicken dinner here. So, you know, that's what's going on there, okay? So when you come at a stop sign, you've got a lot going on. There's a lot of information that, that you need to, okay? You need to see. Time, all right? Now, making the right turn with a stop sign. Execute, begin to signal your attention at least 100 feet away, okay? Start by searching and evaluating. So you're slowing down to give yourself time to see. Once your eyes can see the intersection, then you can start evaluating what it is your plan of action. Once you know what you're gonna do, boom, you go ahead and that's it, okay? Remember the risk of neighborhood driving, check your mirrors on both sides and, and in the back um, of the car, watch for other road users in the crosswalk or preparing to enter the crosswalk. As you your turn, brake and slow down. So you're braking and slowing down. The pace that you have in the key that you keep is going to help serve you in evaluating what's going on. Okay, that's why I don't have to get on you about speeding because you're going to drive for your environment. And if you pick up all the information in your environment, you're not going to be speeding. It's a very simple equation. Okay. Make your right turn with a stop sign, SQ. You're going to pick a line of center you need to pass in the local uh, uh, focus on that line. You basically want to stay parallel two to three feet from the curb, okay? Uh, break gently to reduce speed. Continue to check your mirrors, look at the other, other road users. Check to the left at additional time for any oncoming traffic. Hold on, y'all. Teaching moment, y'all. Teaching moment.
All right, so prepare to stop if necessary, yield to other road users. All right, once you have completed the turn, begin to accelerate slowly and return to a safe legal speed. So you notice while you're making a turn, it's about keeping a nice, soft, gentle pace as you make the turn. You're not required to stop unless you have to. If you are required to stop, it's the first thing you're doing. Then you keep going. Okay? So if you got commitment issues, it's going to show up and you drive driving. Okay? Samantha, if you can't commit to your boyfriend, you got five different boyfriends and you can't commit to each one of them, it's going to show up when you're you driving, Samantha. Samantha, where are you? There you are. You see what I'm saying, Samantha? It's a yep. Driving. All right. <laughs> Asha, same thing for you, Asha. This is a show for you driving. Yep. If you, if you can't commit to that one boyfriend, you got five from rotating. Then guess what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a show for you driving. Yikes. All right. So, here you go. Making the right turn. 100 feet away. What should a driver do first? Put the blinker on. As you put your blinker on, put your brake on. Start slowing the car to slow the pace down so your eyes can get the information. Once you get forward, you get to the stop line. Where do you stop? You stop at the stop line. You see where the stop line is, but by the time you get to that stop line, you'll know I have a stop sign, they have a stop sign, they have a stop sign, they have a stop sign. There's nobody here, okay? I have the right of way. That's how you're operating. You already have that information by the time you get here. Now what you're gonna do is, you got your blinker on, you're getting ready to turn. As the driver approaches the stop, you look at the intersection, double check the intersection. You look left, straight, right, okay? What that does is that it helps protect you, because why? You're risking danger. The left side here, getting T-boned, crushed into the side of the car by another car, is one of your more dangerous accidents. I don't want that to be happening, okay? So I look to the left first, make sure it doesn't happen. As the car's position changes, the, 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 the straight line becomes dangerous to my left door. So once again, I'm looking there, left, straight, and then I look right, over here and forward, there you go. So your eyes are operating in a one, two, three process. Keep your eyes in a one, two, three process, all right? And then once you get straight down the road, just make sure your signals, your signals turned off, go about your business, all right? Here's that T-bone. This is a Ford Crown Vic. This is a Toyota Corolla Geo Prism. The front bumper of this Crown Vic, here's the front tire. The front tire is already hitting and pressing on the side of the car. There is about three to four, about four feet of bumper in front of that tire. That means there are about four feet of car already inside this car. That's why the T-bone is so impactful. Because that car is already taking up the passenger side and is approaching the driver and it has not stopped its forward motion. So protecting from the T-bone accident is about vision. If I can't see you, I'm not just going, number one. Number two, and if I can see you, I'm looking left, straight, right. If you look to your right, by straight into the straight and then to the left, you wasted three seconds and also you got a car in your door. So you look left, straight, right, okay? Now, left turns, this is what we're just gonna discuss next. They are dangerous because you put the left side and the right side of the car in danger, okay? So there's more risk than the right turn. You just double the risk, that's all it is. You just doubled up, okay? Oh, first it meant to be. All right, now, here's a red car here. I don't like the position. When I look, make a left turn, I never sit in my intersection. It's a very dangerous place to be. You stop at the stop line, stay here. Once you clear the intersection, then you go. So I search, I gotta see the pedestrian cross the road here. I gotta see the travel lane, which is the cars coming opposite me and they're in the travel lane. I gotta make sure this is clear. I also gotta look to my right for bicyclists because they, they're not gonna stop at the right. I'm on a bicycle, I'm on a car. I, well, guess what? Now you gotta worry about them on the right side. And pedestrians, see, this is why I don't like being up here. Because now you can't back up. You got pedestrians behind you. You might have pedestrians in front of you. It's all bad. It's all bad, okay? It's all bad. So you stay here, make sure you keep everything in front of you visually, make those judgments, see that it's clear, and then operate, okay? So making a left turn, execute, you're gonna search, again, signal 100 feet away, 
Check your mirrors and your blind spots. Use controlled braking. That is slow. You know, slowly approach by slowing down, braking slowly. Approach the intersection. Stop at the correct place. That's your stop line. All right. Um, search the intersection for all potential hazards. Turn your head in the direction that the, of the turn before turning the steering wheel. Okay. So you're looking left, straight, right, uh, right. You got all the information, and there you go. Okay. Um, use light acceleration and turn the steering wheel simultaneously. Straighten the car, gradually accelerate to the proper speed, and continue to check your mirrors. Again, behind the wheel, we're going to nail this. You best, you know, so that's why I have you. You're going to nail it. All right. Um, what should a driver do when preparing to make a left turn? First of all, signal. Communicate. Once again, um, Daphne. How do you know that it's time or you're gonna we're gonna meet up? So how does Daphne know that her and I, she and I, are gonna meet up at Chick-fil-A? Somebody has to communicate. Daphne has to say, meet me at Chick-fil-A at six o'clock on, on, on Friday. I have to say, Daphne, uh, you want to meet today at Chick-fil-A uh, uh, Friday at 6.30. Okay, we're communicating. Last communication, Daphne be at one Chick Fil A and then Bowie, I'll be at the other. I'll be, she'll be there at six o'clock. I'll be there at six thirty. We have to effectively communicate. Do you see what I'm saying? Again, it's a social premise. All right, you keep keep it in your driving. All right, so you get to your stop line right here. Remember, you stay behind it. You, you look at your intersection. Cool, nobody's there. I'm good to go. I got the right away. As you go, you double check yourself. You always double check yourself. One, two, three, one, two, three. Keep it moving, all right? What's your driver doing? Look at the intersection, see what's going. When you make your left turn, what you're going to do is you're going to come where your front bumper or your front tires hit the middle of the road. So this yellow line becomes the middle of the road. This is indicating of where you're going to turn. So your position, your timing is all set by your eyes seeing this reference point, okay? So watch what happens. Your red car comes out, goes to turn, but as they're in a position, they go to turn, the blue car takes off. Because the proper position, they allow themselves to be um, without having an accident. You turn early, you spend more time in the travel lane, which increases Johnny Rocket here having an accident with you. Okay? After completing the turn, what should you do? Take your blinker off. You're all right. Now, roundabouts, what are they? they? are just a traffic control. So a way to slow down traffic without using a light, you, you traffic gets maintained and keep moving. Remember, roundabouts are a big yield sign. Yield signs are not stop signs. I keep saying this. You have to pre-plan the yield sign. The effective use of, of a yield sign is pre-planning with the information. If you see it early, the yield sign is no big deal. But if you ever get to a yield sign, and all of a sudden, the person's like this. You know you're in trouble. They don't know what they're looking for. They're not following the process. All right? Oh, by the way, let me point this out to you. Um, when you have a double lane roundabout, each lane is, is going to be uh, uh, notified or, see, or notify you of the direction you're allowed to go. So the left lane goes straight into the left. The right lane in this roundabout goes to the right or straight. It doesn't go back to the left. So if you have to go to the left, you have to be in the left lane. This is a double at the bottom, double at the top, south and north, but east and west, it is single. So going through is a single lane going through, which means that the left lane is dedicated to go to the left. Your markings are telling you this. You have to read your markings. So between the markings and the yield sign, this tells you everything you need to know about how to operate this, okay? Now, when you use your blinker, the MVP is going to tell you it's a good idea to use your blinker beforehand, you know. Well, it is, but there's one way. You really don't need to use your blinker, you know, going in. Coming out, by law, Maryland State law, you must use your blinker when exiting a roundabout, okay? So, again, the doubles, uh, a multiple lane, single lane, the use of the, uh, use of the uh, blinker is mandatory by law. Exit, you must turn, you, you must exit when you, um, Use your blinker when you exit, okay? Now, uh, move to the yield sign, the way for the gap. 
By the time you get there, you don't sign. You should already have your gap planned out. You should see what pedestrians are doing, and you should be able to keep it moving. All right? Reduce your speed to keep to the right. Watch for bicycles and pedestrians. All that should be done ahead of time. Okay? You do not have to stop in the roundabout. You have the right of way over entering traffic. Okay? So once you're in the roundabout, you have the right of way. You have to understand that. You don't stop, don't stop. Not stopping. Okay? Always keep to the right of central of the island and travel in the clockwise direction. You're all moving in the same direction. Okay? Counterclockwise. Use your signal appropriately when entering and exit. See? But Maryland law states you use it when you exit. Okay? Maryland law states you use it when you exit a roundabout. Okay? Making a simple left or right turn. Critical to search carefully. Pedestrians crossing the driveway. People, pets, and others in the driveway. Other road users in the roadway between you and your driveway. In the driveway, you pull to your friend's house. They got a little brother or sister. Kids just leave their stuff anywhere. So you pull into that driveway. Now you got to stop. If your car is like half in, the route, ha half, in half out, you're setting yourself up for failure. You don't always stop out here in the middle of the road either. So you have to have a plan of action on what's going on because your house is residential. You probably have kids to deal with, okay? Um, check all around the vehicle. You got your seat put electronics off. Start the vehicle. Put the remember to leave your foot on the brake slightly. Left foot on the dead pedal. Shift the car into reverse. Slowly back up. You, you can use your backup camera if you have one, but mirrors. Why? The backup camera is a tool. It is not... Don't stare at it. it is, no, it's a tool. Okay? You may not need to use the accelerator, but you may want your foot to be lightly touching the brake. All right? Uh, constantly check to see what is behind you on the driveway and on the roadway you're entering. Okay? And then you may proceed. And they give you what you need. All right? So potholes form in bad weather. Water seeps into the pavement and expands. Okay? So as a driver, you need to see your risk and dangers. Potholes, look ahead, make sure the checking point around for potholes. Slow down, reduce speed safely. Beware of puddles, they can disguise a deep pothole. So you look for a pothole. What you do is you're looking ahead of you. Look for information by those ahead of you. Brakes, they're swerving, pothole. You have to look ahead of you also to look at the weather, okay? If you see bad weather, bad weather's coming, then it may cover up a pothole. If bad weather has passed, then the pothole will, is gonna uh, not is not gonna be illuminated and be covered by water. Okay, so that's what you're doing there. Okay, so you're looking for potholes. You're looking for the symptoms, the things around that warn you of a pothole. The storms lead to rain, to water. That water leads to what? A pothole. Then you see it last minute. You see other people swerving, use other people for information, okay? It's not about you. You use other people for information, all right? Speed humps are designed in controlled areas where there may not be many traffic control devices, okay? So you will need the lower speed. Many warning signs have a regular posted, posted speed limit, okay? Failing to do so may, may result in serious da damage to your vehicle, all right? So you can bottom out. That's why, again, you plan ahead. Slow down. If it says 25, you should be doing 25. Okay? Slow down. See how how uh, high, how short, how wide, how narrow these speed humps are. Warning. If you go to an apartment building or a strip mall, you're going to find those death raters. Okay? These uh, uh, medians, these, these humps, will take your car out. Okay? So you have to make sure that you have all that information. Uh, under control by doing the speed limit, all right? 25, 25, 25. I do not want that 4,000 pound buffalo on top of my car, okay? Simply put, parking, all right? I don't know who parked the car there. I hope it wasn't anybody in this classroom. Trevon, I don't think you put, the, put that car there, did you? So reference points, notice around your car, 15, 20 feet in front, 15, 20 feet to the left, it is unstable for your eyes to see in that area because it's not accurate for your eyes. 30 to 40 feet behind, 30 to 40 feet to the left, I mean to the right, I mean, is unstable for your eyes. Your eyes are blurry, it misses information, it's not exactly sure what it's looking at. You have to look far to near. <laughs> so by the time you move into that space, you already have it taken care of. 
Okay? Reference points. What is a reference point? Here, they use the stop the stop line in your side mirror. When they look parallel, you stop, you're at the stop line. Most times you stop for a stop line, you don't have to, you don't have to use this because stop stop lines right here. Okay? So I always tell people use the front bumper. When the stop line disappears from the front bumper, hit your brake, stop the car. Okay? That's why we gradually slowly come into our intersection. Alright? Um, reference points here. If you want to be six feet, six inches away from the curb, what you want to do is look at a distance in front of the car, 30 to 50 feet, and then this gives you the measurement of six inches from the right side of the car to the curb. Okay? Question. Um, yeah. The whole um, theory of six inches from the curb, is that like, for instance, like, let's say hypothetically, like if you're parallel parking, so like your wheel doesn't like hit the curb, Okay. With parallel parking, you have to be within 12 inches. Okay? So there's a. You, you said have, you have to what? You have to be within 12 inches of the curb. Oh, you, so double. Okay. Okay? So there's the, there is the measurements that you have to make. You don't want to hit the curb. So you want to have the car's trajectory in space, maintain space on point. How do you do that? It's looking away from the car, not looking next to the car. You have to plan ahead and look away from the car. So each of you, when you start doing parallel parking, perpendicular parking, all this stuff, all these U-turn, all these maneuvers, they are done by looking at a distance, okay? They're done by looking at a distance, all right? So perpendicular parking right here. Check traffic to the rear and signal appropriately. Uh, position the left as possible. Um, when the front bumper passes the left taillight of the parked car, turn sh sharply to the right, okay? Straighten wheels when centered into space and using forward reference points. Again, what are your reference points? There are reference points. There are points that you look at with your eyes and, know, and it tells you when to operate. So you use reference points in your driving because it tells your eyes when you should be operating. Once again, I know when I should approach somebody, okay? I know when I approach my wife. There's a good time and a bad time, okay? I look at it. My eyes tell me that. Look. Abort, go back to my room, go back outside, shut your mouth. I know when to approach a young lady. Some people don't want to be bothered. Other people will be game, will be game on. I got to know, look, look at it. You might not want me bothering her. So me going up to mine and say, hey, cutie. I, no, she's not even fighting about that. She's like, give me, boy, come on. I got, I got business to take care of. Okay? But if she's smiling and she looks at me, she gives a big smile. It's like, hey, now I know. Hey, how you doing, girl? Now I know the approach. You see what I'm saying? It's a social, it's a social interaction. Driving is social interaction, okay? So, here's the example right here. So notice he positions the car away, creating more space in front of the space. In front of the space, he turns when it's reference point, which is the the lane uh, of the light, the white line that's faded in the pavement. That's when he turns. He uses momentum to guide him into the space. As he does so, boom, he's done. Okay, he's done his parking. All right, slowly hit your brake once you get in there. Uh, so here, yeah, signals indicate where he's going. Slow down, turn to the path of travel. When the path is clear, it turns the vehicle to the space. Do not accelerate. He does not accelerate. He coasts or he puts his foot on the brake. Okay? And then there you go. In the space you go. Parallel, uh, angle parking. Listen. It's very much the same thing. It's a different context, different situation, orientation. But it's all the basic same things. Okay? You're to check for traffic and pedestrians. Signal and approach. You want to communicate. Okay? Don't want to be surprised here. You want to communicate. All right? Position the car six feet from the road car. Make space, enough space that you can no go negotiate. Move forward slowly until you see the center of the space. Once you see the center of the space, first point to go ahead and turn. You turn the wheel. Um, you coast into it. And as you turn the wheel sharply, to right, stay in the center of the lane. Um, you put your put the brake, straighten your wheels up. You're done. Okay? That's all it is right there. All right? Leaving, you're going to check all directions again. It's rinse and repeat, y'all, at this point.
continue to check your mirrors, your backup cameras, you do your head check, all right, as well. Move straight back into the back of the seat and align to the back of the vehicle. Turn the wheel to the right, okay? Or I would say your seat belt, your B pillar, okay? You can then you'll turn the wheel to the right and then shadow the brake, quick stops if needed, boom, you'll be good to go. All right? So it's 8.10 now. Uh, watch this right quick. Notice that it guides in. You can't see the curve. Stop the car. Okay? Um, let's come back at 820. Let's come back at 820, all right? 